Combining the sounds of the orchestra, ethnic instruments, desk bells, and packing a few more surprises, Flying With Mother is one of the most unique and energetic tracks from John Powell's How to Train Your Dragon scores. An award-winning fan favorite, and yet it almost didn't happen. If the music didn't work here, the whole scene was going to be cut. And despite being a last-minute effort, it was anything but phoned in, so it has a wide variety of themes, sounds, and languages, making it one of the most interesting cues I know. I'm also explaining three specific skills John Powell used to throw this together and deliver on the power and emotion called for in the scene. First, the official scorebook directs to play the piece joyfully. That tone is set with the very light sounds like triplet harp arpeggios and, yes, desk bells. The rhythm is set by the Irish Bowron and the Indian Doll drums, both of which are pretty standard percussion for the series. Illin pipes, Irish bagpipes, come in with the melody. But I'm getting ahead of myself because none of this was supposed to play here. To retread some of what I said in my first score analysis, music was already picked out for this scene. Another song from the musician Yonsi, friend of director Dean Dabla. Yonsi has a song in the credits of each movie, plus one in an earlier scene, not to mention the one he co-wrote with John Powell that's sung by the characters and has a story role. In an interview, Powell said when the movie screened for test audiences, this was the point where people lost interest or would leave to go to the bathroom. The song wasn't working, so neither was the scene, and because the scene wasn't working, the whole thing was going to be cut. If you're wondering what that song was, it may be on YouTube, but the video doesn't specify where the recording came from or include a song title, and none of the interviews refer to it by name either, so take it with a grain of salt. But assuming this is it, it's very repetitive with only one melody, it doesn't change enough with the changes in the scene anyway, and I think it really falls short in conveying the emotion in the important parts. I don't even feel a cold, I just feel free. I think using this song would have been jarring anyway. The first movie had a song, but it only played during the credits. And this would have made not one, not two, but three songs during the movie. Plus the diegetic one with the story role. So I want to hear in the comments, at what point does the score start to get sidelined for the movie to be interrupted by a series of, basically, music videos? Is three or four too many? Would Test Drive or Romantic Flight have the same power if they used songs there instead? Before they could cut the scene, Dean DeBlas and John Powell both wanted it to stay in. Powell said he loved what it stood for with Hiccup finally meeting and spending time with his mother, and he figured it was worth a few headaches to get it right. Which leads us to skill number one, working last minute. Powell says he likes to come in late on a movie to offer fresh perspective when everyone else has been working on it for a year or more already. Plus, movies, especially animated movies, can change direction late in the process, so the later he comes in, the closer it is to its final cut. Even Forbidden Friendship was last minute, one of the very last touches on the entire movie, and he's deadline motivated. Coming in late adds the pressure, which helps him to get the ideas out. So, maybe doing this so late was more of an advantage? Not that it was fun for him. I'm sure throwing this together in 10 days was... not easy. He decided to score the scene, but he still needed to figure out which themes to use here, and there was plenty to choose from. The Alpha appears in this scene, so Powell could have reused the Alpha theme, but his writing is usually driven to convey certain story themes instead of announcing the presence of a character, so it would only disrupt the flow of the scene. He's pretty hard to miss, anyway. Even the main themes, like in Test Drive, are really story themes. Scoring ideas and story themes instead of characters allows the focus to be on what the scene is really about, but that's something I'd explain more in its own video. Option 2 is playing Valka's theme, but the scorebook points out it's used to emphasize her absence. It's more effective in the scene directly after this. There's one theme he knew fit here thematically more than anything else. Lost and Found. Lost and Found is the main theme for the second movie, something Powell came up with himself based on his own interpretation of the story, and it connects the dots of the major story points. It deals with loss and discovery, highlights characters being separated or reunited, always in significant ways, losing someone for good, or reconnecting with someone who was lost. 
You can see my full two-part video for its entire story arc, because there's a lot to it in this movie and the next. I honestly think it's Powell's deepest and most personal theme. I mean, the whole thing was his idea. Lost and Found had become so important in the narrative, he felt it had to appear in this scene. But there was a problem. It was a slow and tragic theme never intended for such a fast and upbeat scene. This is what it was written for. And this is it in Flying with Mother. He had a lot of work to do, or as he put it, he had to keep getting a bigger hammer to get the peg through the hole, which involved finding the right key and increasing the tempo until he found one fast enough, which happened to be 200 beats per minute, much higher than what it played at before. Now that he'd decided on Lost and Found, he had to figure out how to use it. Bagpipes, which are a loud and joyful instrument, and the choir. A female choir is already in many of Valka's scenes, mostly just oohs and ahs. But to give the choir a more active role with words to hang on to, he gave them lyrics. Here they sing 17th century poetry in Gaelic, which we now have the lyrics to thanks to the scorebook. Now I don't speak Gaelic, and Google Translate hasn't been a huge help. Goo. But here's a bit of the singing with the lyrics. And here's the end of the second half of the melody. It's time for a bit of a breather with a quieter moment, so the music follows. Sleigh bells and marimbas enter, giving it a softer, icy, almost magical feeling. But they also carry over from Forbidden Friendship, drawing a parallel. The secondary theme in the queue is the map theme, a loose and abstract theme that has many meanings. It deals with the ideas of identity, exploration of the world, and self-discovery. It still deserves its own video to elaborate on that, but here Hiccup has been exploring and building the map, and his mother already knows the map. She can fill it in. While he's trying to show it to her, she draws it in the snow around him. She's someone he can learn from. For skill number two, remember how joyful the scene is supposed to be. John Powell has reflected on his career and realized what he thinks he's best at is joyful music. He can write anything the scene calls for, maybe more than he gives himself credit for, but he prefers writing music that elates people, which really shines in this cue. The choir returns with Lost and Found, with some Gaelic lyrics and some easier to understand. A lot of the choir moments are supported by a synth bass for some reason. The first movie uses an electric guitar in places to give it a modern edge, so maybe the bass is here for the same reason. Next, Valka parkours her way through floating dragons. The music escalates as she slides back onto her own, and then it suddenly gets quieter instead of louder, which is the moment for skill number three, writing for flying music. How to Train Your Dragon is filled with flying moments and flying music. Soaring, gliding, just achieving lift. It's a key part of the series, so it's important that Powell got it right. It's probably not a coincidence that the first music he wrote for the series was for Test Drive, an important flying scene. The whole main theme is a flying theme that was then adapted for the rest of the score, but it goes beyond that. Flying music is one of the staples of his career that he's had to reimagine in different forms, ranging from chickens escaping the farm by building a plane somehow, to Han Solo and Chewbacca flying the Millennium Falcon. Flying with Chewie even has the guitar and sleigh bells. In an interview with John Brown, Powell named Ron Goodwin as one of his influences. He said people used to say, if it flies, get Ron Goodwin, and that now it's more, if it flies, get John Powell. And flying music gets a new twist at the end of Flying with Mother. An oboe plays the map theme, joined by the piccolo for the second half of the melody, elevating even higher. A few horns harmonize but fade out pretty quickly, while two harps strum the chords and pick up a few notes of the theme. 
The strings get some of the melody, chords, and the heavier bass notes, contrasting with everything else that keeps climbing up. And I think most importantly, the choir hums the harmony with the strings. Something about it just gives the moment the lift it needs. It just sounds like this sudden moment of bliss gliding peacefully. And it needs to sound this way, because it's how the characters feel. It has what the song was missing. I don't even feel a cold, I just feel... free. The music crescendos to its loudest point as Hiccup dives off Toothless. Then there's a brief rest, and then back to flying. Lost and Found returns triumphantly in the full horn and string sections, supported by, well, almost everything that's played so far, even the synth bass. This time the choir has no lyrics, because they're back to a supporting role. The bagpipes return towards the end, and the melody pretty much gets to finish. But Hiccup doesn't watch the road while he's flying solo, so it abruptly goes off the rails and everything crashes down, with more triplet rhythms, finally holding a low note in the strings. When he pops up out of the snow, it returns to the lighter sounds, ending with a celeste and some softer lower strings. So the music fumbles with the action, and then has a bit of a recovery with it, too. We just about had it that time! <laughs> Even though this cue was last minute, it quickly became a highlight of the scores. Both themes happen to be in 3-4, 6-8, so they pair well taking turns with each other, and they also have a story role. And because it's a waltz time signature, it makes this sequence a kind of mother-son dance. It's ironic that now when people think of either Lost and Found or the map theme, they usually think of this track, considering neither was supposed to be here. And using them both here creates a convenient, joyful high point for them before they're used more seriously for the rest of the movie. Each movie in this series has a musically motivated bonding scene featuring a lot of lighter sounds like marimbas, harp, and sleigh bells. And if they cut it or just used a song, I think it would be missing something. So I ask again, does the movie overuse songs? Would Forbidden Friendship work with the song? Because they tried that too, which I went over in this video, and then I put it back with the scene in this one. I'll let you be the judge, and I want to hear what you think. Ironically, this video is now a late addition to the One Musical Scene series, so check out that playlist for more videos like this others have made, or make one yourself and add it. In the meantime, please like the video if you liked it, and subscribe for more in-depth analysis of desk bells and languages. Goo. That's all for me. Thanks for watching.